Let's consider a hydrogen atom. You might know from chemistry that a hydrogen atom consists of a single proton surrounded by a single electron. And what I've got here on the left is I've recorded the rest masses of a proton, 1.673 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. The rest mass of an electron, 9.109 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms and then I've recorded here the charge on a proton 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs and the charge on an electron which is also 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Now of course we consider an electron to have a negative charge and a proton to have a positive charge but we're ignoring that in this analysis because it's not required. All we're worried about is the strength of the interaction. But you should know that a proton has the same quantity of charge as an electron. And in coulombs, that quantity of charge is 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Newton's law of gravity says that there is a gravitational attraction between any two masses anywhere in the universe. So there should be a gravitational attraction between the proton in the nucleus of a hydrogen atom and the one electron. And if we use the Cavendish constant, the mass of a proton, the mass of the electron, we're going to divide by the distance between them squared, and we get that kind of a number. And that's fine and dandy. But we also have a relationship, and if you haven't covered this in your classes yet, that's perfectly fine. This is called Coulomb's Law. And Coulomb's law talks about how strong the force is between two charges. Notice the similarity in the equations. There is a constant, in this case k, but instead of in Newton's law of gravity, you take the product of the masses. In Coulomb's law, you take the product of the charges. But in both of these laws, you divide by the square of the distance between those things. In any case, like I said, if you haven't covered this, it's okay. Coulomb's constant is a large number, 9 times 10 to the ninth. There's the charge on a proton. There's the charge on the electron. There's the distance between them squared. And we get a number that looks like that. So there's a gravitational attraction between a proton and an electron, but there's also an electrostatic attraction. Now. How different are these two? Well, if you look at the powers of 10 here, the gravitational attraction is to the negative 47th power, and the electrostatic attraction is to the negative 8th power. That is quite a bit different. The electrostatic force is roughly some 10 to the 39th power times larger. And in case you're wondering, how many times larger that is. It's shown at the bottom of the screen. In other words, in atoms, gravity has virtually no effect. It's the electrostatic forces that rule when we're talking about atoms and related things like chemical bonds in molecules and that sort of thing. Well, if this is true, that electrostatic forces are way stronger than gravitational forces, why don't electrostatic forces rule the heavens? We've mentioned that they rule in the realm of the atom. Why don't they rule the heavens as well? Let's consider a typical proton and electron on the Earth and the Moon. In this table on the left here, we're going to identify the electrostatic force between, firstly, a proton on the Moon and a proton on the Earth where they're going to repel each other. Now, they're way far away from each other, but they will repel each other because they both have a positive charge. How about an electron on the moon compared to a proton on the Earth? Well, they're going to tend to attract each other. What about a proton on the moon and an electron on the Earth? That's what this green box represents. Well, they're going to attract each other. How about two electrons, one on the moon and one on the earth. Well, they're going to repel. So when it deals with the earth, 
and the moon, the protons do attract the electrons, but they also repel the other protons. In other words, electrostatic forces can attract, they can also repel. What about gravitational forces? How about, is there a gravitational interaction between a proton on the moon and a proton on the earth? Well, they both have masses, so yes, they're going to attract one another. Now, it's not going to be a very big attraction, but it will be an attraction. How about an electron on the moon and a proton on the earth? Well, they have masses, so they're going to attract each other via gravity. What about a proton on the moon with an electron on the earth? Well, they're going to attract each other. And electrons? This is why gravity rules the heavens and not electrostatic forces, because gravitational interactions are only attractive, whereas electrostatic interactions can repel and attract. So on small scales, like the atom, molecules, that kind of thing, electrostatic forces wear the pants. But on large bodies, even the scale of humans and planets, or planets and moons, or planets and stars, gravity wears the pants.